Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so I'm starting now. Uh, just checking about the sound before I get started. So uh, tell me in the comments if, if you see if the sound is good, that is. Okay, I guess it's okay. Very good. Uh, so I'll start. Um, Yama has the uh, black stones. Um, his, he plays this opening a lot. He plays a lot of three, four points. And he has four straight wins in this tournament. So he um, started in the sixth round uh, or the sixth game of the tournament and six, seven, eight, nine. So this is the 10th game of the tournament. Um, there's two Chinese players and one Korean player left. Of course, the Korean is Shin Jin So that's, um, well, it's just one person. But yeah, he's sort of special. So let's go through the opening moves. And I think Miyu Ting and Yama have a pretty even record. So I, as far as I know, it's um, one win each. So they're pretty even against each other. So Yama has black. Yeah, I corrected that. Good. So yeah. So he likes to play three, four points in a diagonal opening recently. He's doing a lot of that. And in this game, and so, sometimes he plays a corner enclosure first. Um, but in this game, he invaded in the three, three point. Uh, I think this is beginning to uh, sort of look like the game he came, he played against Shin, uh, Shin Minjun. Um, the other scene from, from Korea. So white plays in this fashion. It's a modern joseki that is quite often played. And white's idea is to um, get sente. So for instance, if white plays, um, if white had played this joseki, for instance, then this would end in gote and black would have the option of playing something like this. So. Um, giving black a tempo that would change the game. It's probably not so good um, this early in the game. This is a joseki in the upper left corner that we see a lot um, closer to the end of the game, in the middle to end game, when it's um, when the corner territory becomes more important. But um, in the opening, the ponnuki and the the tempo, the fact that black gets sent in, those are two important points. So white could have uh, just extended. Or white, um, this also would have probably been sente for white, probably like this. And this has the same meaning. White's trying to take sente uh, in order to get to the first move here, the card. And white plays two kakaris. And nowadays, people are, seem to be starting to think that it's okay not to play a corner enclosure. Um, so just answering this, um, some people seem to think this is good enough. I, I still have trouble really believing it, but um, like it's difficult to see exactly where Black's territory is going to be, but it's um, I guess it's okay. Okay, so in, in this corner, Black did not play the 3-3 three, three point. Um, I get the feeling that what I would want to do in this kind of opening is I would want to be playing um, an approach move from both sides, especially when White has played high on the fourth line. Um, like this. So uh, this is how I would play using the strong positions in Black has strong positions in the lower left and the upper right corner. So this is the way I would try to be taking advantage of it. Um, but in the game, Black plays the skin and the double hane. And White just extended. So this is the first time I've seen this move. Right. Um, Zhao Yun has noted that Yama lost two games in the Kisei tournament. Um, his challenger is Ichiriki, who seems to be, he's a very busy, busy, a very busy player right now. Ichiriki is really, um, busy. And yes, Chris Davis is right. He, Ichiriki is going to be, um, joining the tournament later on if Yama, uh, loses. So he's one of the players waiting 
Um, the other is uh, Yoseki. That's his Japanese pronunciation of his name. It's a Chinese name. But Yoseki also is waiting to play. So there's two Japanese players apart from Yama. So that makes three Japanese players left in the tournament. Um, there's two Chinese players. There's Miyu Ting and after him there will be KJ. Um, and Korea just has Shinji and so. So I, I think Ichiki is in good form, but he's very busy. So um, I just hope his stamina holds. And he's playing a lot of a lot of games recently. And so yeah, I, I wouldn't say Yama's in that bad form. He he was in very good form for a while there, and he did happen to lose the last two Kisei games. So it is something that worrying maybe. Okay, so um, in the corner here. Black just played two Ataris and got a good shape here. And this is something we saw in Iyama's game against uh, Shin Minjin. So it's actually very similar. Let's see if I can... Um... Yes. There was a game where they didn't have all this stuff on the lower side. And the upper side, it was almost exactly the same shape. So in that game... Um... Shin Minjun was white, and they um, had something like this happening. And in that game, white was playing something on the right side, so um, black ended up um, coming in in here. Uh, and the corner Joseki was slightly different, also. So it was there were some slight differences, but in general, it was very much like uh, very much like this. So this invasion. It's actually a, a move that uh, Yama said that he had already experienced it um, playing with a computer program. So he'd, he'd been playing with a computer and um, and learned this move. So that's what he was saying uh, after he played uh, Shin Minju. He said that up to this point, um, it was an opening that he knew. So although most of the opening is different, this is like a move that he's researched to a certain degree. And the idea is that next move, Black can play an attachment on the third line here. So if white does something on the top, uh, then white, black will be able to play this attachment and make a living shape on the side. So the other option might be um, for black to be doing something like this, which would be a bit more, it would be more um, cramped, even if white just does like this. It's not as if it's going to die, um, but white is going to get a connected shape on the top, a strong position. So he invades, white jumps, and he's probably going to play the same move as he did against Shin Minjin. Okay, we range. Um, thank you. Thank you for the comments. Okay, so he played that way. So that's the difference in that op that um, Joseki in the upper left corner. Because the other game that I was talking about, let's just go back. Um, in the other game I was talking about, um, it was a similar shape. Um, but it was like this. And for one thing, I think that the, the lower left corner, it was com a corner enclosure also. So it was slightly different. Um, but it was more like this kind of opening. Um, this kind of opening, sorry. And Black's corner enclosure was probably in the other direction, um, but it was a case where something like this was happening. So in that case, Black jumped out. And I, if we compare it with the game position, it's probably because the upper left corner here is a very settled shape. So Black didn't bother that. And actually, I think Black might even have had a stone here also. So it was more like this. And the lower upper right corner was a bit less settled, so Black added a stone at 14. In the game here, um, the corner was still less settled. So it was like this. Let's just catch up with the game. So in this position, Black has a position in the lower right corner. So the right side is, uh, if we compare it with the previous position I was showing you, the right side is relatively a stronger area for black, so it's more settled. And the corner 
for instance, if black plays this one, maybe white's going to be doing something like this in the corner. So it would be a different thing happening there. So that sort of explains to me why black was, uh, instead of playing in the relatively settled and safe upper right, black was playing this move in the relatively less settled corner. And it's threatening to connect up somehow to the stone on the side. So it's a really big move. Okay, that jumped ahead a little bit. So white finished off that black stone. And black connected on the side. And white is starting something on the right side. So this move that white has just played is always, um, it's always an important point when black has played that knight's move in the upper right corner. So that shape that black has um, in the upper right. Um, when black has answered white's approach move with a knight's move like this, um, white approaching on the third line here, it's always a move to, that white is looking to play at some point. So it's an important move there that white wants to play. And if white leaves it, that black group is, is not going to be settled. So it would make sense for black to want to add a stone maybe. So um, an, an, an intuitive move for me would be to start at least with this move. Just to, I would be interesting to see if white just goes straight down, which I would sort of expect. Or maybe white's going to take sente with this exchange. But in either case, this is going to be reinforcing the black corner. So it's, that's something that um, I would want to do immediately. Yes, uh, there's KJ and Shin Jin So. Um, and if we look at the record, Iyama is the best player in Japan. So I'm just sort of picking up on the comments that I'm getting here um, in the chat. So yes, like whereas my albatross is saying, Yama basically has the most prize money last year, that's true. And so he has the most titles. So in that way he's doing best. But if you but he did lose his most recent two games against um Ichiriki. So Ichiriki is doing really well also. And if we talk about the quality of play, I think that Yoseki, uh, and again I'm I'm saying his name in the Japanese pronunciation, uh, while it's originally, uh, he's from type, uh, Taipei, would I say? Um, so, um, so he has a Chinese name. So I don't, someone who knows that could just add that to the chat if they want to give the Chinese name. Because I don't feel confident. Um, the black, uh, both of, he's also, if we look at the quality of his play, um, he hasn't gotten quite to the title uh, holder level in his um, record, but he does play um, very good games. So he's he's a pretty uh, solid player too. So I, I would say that he would play an, an interesting game at least. R7. Oh yes. Okay. Um, Abdullah RL is talking about the black group in the upper right um, and wondering when black should be playing moves like R7 or Q7. So that would be, for instance, um, and there's a good answer to that um, because in this position, black doesn't really have to worry about this so much because black has this capture here. So as soon as uh, the corner situation is sort of weak for black, Black could be thinking about playing R7 or Q7. So just to show what those moves I'm talking about are. Um, for instance, if white goes straight down here. And let's just assume this kind of exchange here. Well, actually, black will... This is a position where already black can start playing here. And this would give black um, what I would call... This is already pretty close to being a living shape. So like if we assume black plays away and... Um, it's just, um, and this this could be a bit painful, but black would usually be able to start to make eyes with this. So um, actually, in actual play, black might be thinking of covering here 
uh, as soon as he gets attuned. So um, the answer to how soon uh, to play R7 or Q7, Black probably wants to play it pretty soon. Um, but kicking in the corner with one is something that I would want to do first. So let's see what the game... Oh, the game looks like this. So in the game, Black did kick. And White played the Hane and the Tari. And yeah. So th this lower right corner, this was a point that was... Locally, it was a forcing move for Black. Black could have played... Um, Black could have played here. And locally, it's forcing White to play here. Um, but in this board position, White might actually be playing here or, or maybe this side. Uh, White might continue in the upper right corner with a variation like this where White sacrifices two stones in the corner. So locally, it was forcing, but I don't know for sure that it would be forcing immediately. So that's a reason for Black not to play it yet. But it is a big move for White because it takes away the eye space of the Black group. If white had played something like this, then black would then play here. And black's, as it stands, black is pretty much alive. So, for instance, um, even if we assume that um, black doesn't have much in the way of getting out, if we call it, I mean, out into the center, even if we say this black group is pretty much isolated, in order to kill it, white would have to play here, which means it's just not going, even locally, it's not going to work. So once black plays the Hane on the first line here, it's going to be alive. So that's a good reason for white to play here. It's really big. It's uh, probably about 10 points in territory also, depending on how you come. There's, there's a potential co-like position that could happen. And extending, that's, that's the Mi'ai for that move. Because, of course, if white extends their uh, white's going to get a base. And by extending their black is pretty much okay also. Okay, so white's moving out, trying to lean on that black group, which is going to be fairly well established. Oh yes, counting till us is um, talking about the time setting, which is, that's right, that agrees with what I know. It's one hour apiece, so um, this is relatively short time um, control, so it's not as if it's going to go on throughout the night. I mean, it's, it's the afternoon for me, but yeah, um, maybe the night for people um in the americas and it's very early morning for people in europe i believe um, but it's probably just going to be like the two hours and then after that it's one minute one time so it's just the one minute it's um when they say one minute one time comparing that to one minute five times if you have one minute five times then you use up your minute and then you're four minute four times and so you can you can run out of time four times and then the fifth time is just the one minute whereas in this case it's one minute only one time which means that they can't run out of the minute um, even once that would lose by time uh, forfeit by time and so okay scoob um, is saying does the short time limit cause the players to change strategy um and definitely yes um the opening moves this uh this live stream it started as the game started so it was um the same time that um it was we were seeing it happening real time and the first moves were very quick so um the fact that um the time is short i think it caused the players to play something that they were familiar with almost like they were playing a prepared opening which does not always happen in in go like, it's something that um, people say happens a lot in chess, where people have a lot of moves prepared. But in Go, people tend to be um, improvising more and thinking on the spot sometimes, um, just um, to make variation. And just because of the fact that the Go board being so big compared to a chess board, there's, it's just naturally very, very difficult to be having the same opening every time. So naturally people do improvise but in this game i was seeing the players playing an opening that looked like they had prepared it and it did have a strong re resemblance to the game that yama played against shin minju okay 
Um, Nico Kent is saying that he watched the AlphaGo documentary in November and has just started playing. Um, the main things to look for and understand about the professional games. Um, well, there's so much variance in Go. Um, it's, it's really very difficult to get stronger just memorizing things. So I think at first when you're watching professional games and you're just a novice Go player, just getting a feel of uh, how they are um, moving to relatively empty areas of the board and trying to control and, and just trying to look at the entire picture there without bar bothering about the more the, the details because it takes a lot of it, it will take um, some more you have to advance a bit I think before you really know um, exactly what's happening Vict Prague is saying that I'm not familiar with the Joseki in the lower right was P17 the um, P17 was it the best move um, let's take a look at that, Joseki, because it's sort of it was sort of strange. I, I'm I'm seeing it for the first time. Let's get back to the main game. Yes. Just give me a moment here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, so. Um, by the way, Rick Rubenstein is saying the game seems quite calm. Yes, it is starting as a calm game. And it looks like Black has a lead in territory. And we're going to see what happens to the white area that white's trying to build in the center. But white doesn't have very much territory in this game. And so I'd, I'd say I would be happy to play with Black so far. So that's, I, I suppose that's good news for Yama. Um, depending on how much you trust me, I guess. Okay, so let's go back to that Joseki. And it was interesting to see that happen for the first time. So here, this is a position where um, we used to say that like if you're in doubt, you can just connect and black will play here and white will play here. So this is still something you can play. Um, nowadays, people tend to think that it might be a bit weak when you compare it to, for instance, if you compare it to this Joseki. So this is uh, a Joseki that would be more common. And if white goes down, black has to do something about that group. And black will have a choice of pushing, which is not completely stable. But um, for instance, later on, if white, um, if white does something like this, then we do have a position where Black's group is not alive yet. So Black has to deal with that um, fairly soon in the game. So it's not as if it's alive. If white want, if Black wants to avoid that kind of running fight, um, then Black can play a more solid move here. Um, and pros and cons, it's a very subtle thing. But this would create a living position on the right side. And basically it would cool down the right side. The, the value of the right side would be reduced. And white would probably be playing here anyway. So these are the kind of the things that I would say I'm sort of expecting to happen in this position. And playing away like this is something that I did not, I've never seen it. And so if black plays something like this, then uh, maybe white's just going to play away again. So I think it makes sense that black would want to... Um, heat it up just a little bit, make the local position more important by cutting once here and then choosing a move. And he chose to play this way. Um, he could have done this now, in which case if white wants to save those two stones at the edge of the board, white would play something like this and then black could play here. This is slightly better than the game. So I think what he was afraid white might do would be this. In this case, white is actually sacrificing those two stones. Black can capture them like this. And white will have a wall, white will have sente. So um, the fact that white gets sente and is sort of squeezing black here, um, like locally we can imagine that eventually it's going to be a shape something like this. So white has squeezed black a little and probably will not play all those forcing moves. Means white can uh, play away with something like this or something like this. Probably one of those two moves. So that was the idea. 
Um, it's This is something that could have happened, and I get the feeling that Yema was avoiding that variation by playing an Atari on the fourth line. So uh, my take on this, and locally if you expect black to play here and white to play here, this is how I'd expect the local variation to end. Although white did have the option of playing away with this move, or if black plays here again, white has the option of playing away and sacrificing those three stones. So that could explain why Yama played away here. Um, and it being that I've, I'm seeing this position, this shape in the lower right corner for the first time, it looks like it's a good way for black to play. If, uh, to me, it looks good. So that's my answer to that question. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Uh, James Sedgwick is giving us the percentage, so uh, apparently Black has 63%, so let's catch up to the point where I was saying that. Yeah, so this kind of move, it um, it's a very human move because if Black had played that honey in the corner, it would have been a forcing move locally. So that's why sort of um, if white, the normal move would maybe to be some kind of extension, black would immediately play here. Locally, it's a forcing move and you feel a bit annoyed about it. So I understand this move, but um, it's not as if black is going to be in trouble here because black has a pretty solid position there and chasing white out into the center. And white had to play that move to deal with that. So I um, that's why I, sort of have the feeling that maybe this is okay for black. And this is where I was saying that. And so that's where um, James Sedgwick is giving us the fine art percentage of 63% for black, which is, it's good for black, obviously, but um, close enough to an even game for human, for human players. Yes, we say um, only Shin Jin So is left for the Korean team. And in tournaments I've seen recently, um, often he seems okay with uh, about four other professionals to compete with. But um, still, uh, as far as the numbers are concerned, Japan does have a big advantage here. Okay, so black pincers. So this was a position where um, if black had been worried about those stones in the corner, um, he would have played something like this. So locally, this would be a very solid move uh, where black has a living shape in the corner. But eventually... Um, if we say eventually black is um, sort of surrounded, like it wouldn't happen immediately, but if we imagine a shape like this, then later on in the game, white is going to be able to play moves like this. And it's going to be, um, black, white's going to be able to squeeze black to a certain degree. And this is actually a position where you could actually manufacture some life and death problems. So it could be, um, like if black is really careful and plays something like this, then uh, this and this are me. Yeah, so white's going to play here. And this is really painful for black. So since this is painful, maybe black's going to be a bit more adventurous. And then uh, weird things can happen with this shape. It's a shape where um, bad things can uh, potentially happen. So some kind of a co could happen here. For instance, this would be a co. Uh, so... It is a kind of a tricky position where black doesn't really want to allow white to surround black. And it means that black would be um, maybe playing some less efficient moves. Or maybe black would be playing um, playing this, this move here at an early stage. And then even after that, if, if at some later date white plays here, it still has a, that kind of... It, this is called the carpenter's square position when black has that nine points in the corner. With the curling around at 9, it's a, a bit better than the carpenter square, so it's not going to die. But um, in some cases, this kind of shape can turn into a set. So it's sort of 
Although black has lived in the corner, it can be weak in territory. So he's he, maybe he's just not going to do that. He's, he's just going to try to avoid that. And he's moving towards uh, a running fight out into the center. So you can see he's trying to make some forcing moves against white on the on the bottom side here. And if white answers, the shape move would be to answer like this. And if we just follow the shape, it's, it's going to be something like this. Uh, like this would be an ideal sequence for black, where black is sort of playing on both sides. Uh, let's just be greedy and play this one too. So if black gets to play on both sides like this, making territory on the left while escaping out into the center on the right, this would probably be working really good for black. It would be probably, um, it's probably too good to be expecting. So that's why white is maybe posing here. This was a point where white could be thinking about uh, playing something in the center or maybe, yes, like that. Uh-huh. Not giving me time to do the diagrams here. Yeah. Oh, okay, so that's James Sedgwick talking about um, fine arts analysis here again. That's sort of interesting, so I'll pick up on that one. Um, so he was saying that, uh, as I said, like, like I just have a feeling that um, computer programs don't like this this kind of move that's low on the board. It's just automatically, it's, it's sort of often, it's not in the neural networks. It's, it's not, it doesn't get a high score just naturally. And then of course, um, maybe they don't, don't know how to follow up with it. It's, it's a very human looking move. And this is the move that uh, James Sedgwick is telling us that fine art wanted white to be playing a more active move like this. And yes, I understand that. Again, this, this kind of stuff is, for human players, sometimes it's difficult to make it work because when you go into the AI analysis with moves like this, and like if black plays a honey, white's probably going to cut or something. Um, sometimes it doesn't always work locally. Um, and it gets really um, hard to see exactly how it's working, even in the full game context. And um, so it, sometimes it's a bit hard for me to understand what's going on when uh, computers get into this kind of variation. And I think for humans in general, even talking about players of the level of the players in this game, it, it tends to be difficult to follow through after playing a move, even though it's being given a good score by a computer. In some of these cases, it's going to be difficult to follow through. So this is a, um, it's kind of an AI move that I'm not surprised we're not seeing the player play it. So cutting and taking there, it's a very Yama move here. <laughs> um, he just loves territory. And like I would have been thinking about doing something in the lower left actually. So I would be thinking maybe of this one or maybe of this one. Uh, but this is just so um, sort of vintage Yama. It's just the way he likes to take some extra territory. He knows that's a point that White would like to have played at some point. And it's annoying because now black is definitely ahead in territory. Um, white might be feeling some pressure. So there's that kind of idea there also. And so black didn't want to live in the corner in that variation I was showing you. He didn't want to play like this. Um, it would have been potentially a bit painful. So he's um, so he's not doing that. And he pincered. He's trying to take control of the left side. And white is like it's not going to play the shape move which, um, as I was showing before, it's going to give Black some control of the flow of the game. So th in this um, fight, Black's going to be able to move out into the center and reduce White's potential in the center also. So that was Black's idea. And White countered by playing on top here and is looking at an invasion on the, on the left side, as well as trying to attack Black. So this is developing into something that's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, White would like to be able to... Have I caught up? 
Yes, I put up with the game. White would like to be able to surround this black group. Um, okay. Uh, Rick Rubenstein is asking, could White have played the Tessuji at C18 instead of running? And um, I'll use that one because it's a bad idea. So um, so it's, it's good to have questions like that too. So if White plays here, locally this is a Tessuji, something that's worth knowing because if Black comes on this side, then White can play here. Um, White, of course, is black, taking away Black's base and is starting to make two eyes. So that's how that move works. Or if Black plays here, White's thinking of sacrificing um, that stone there. So uh, something like this might happen, or here. Um, the problem with this is that uh, White doesn't want things to be settled like this. So like if White um, continues with something like this, and we see Black getting a territory there on the left, uh, this would be good for Black. So what White wants to do is, White wants this big fight, because White has a strong position in the center. White doesn't have... Uh, really, white is, has a deficit in territory. White doesn't. The lower side alone is not going to be enough territory for white. So white wants the fight to go on, and has potential to attack black. So white's trying to play very strongly, aggressively, actively, and that shows with this move where white is threatening to invade the left side, and trying to put pressure on this black group. Okay, so yeah, so again here, so like if black does. For instance, if Black decides he's, he better get uh, a living shape here and does something like this, even if White just plays very simply like this, uh, living in the corner, and again, it's going to be sort of uh, painful and Black's going to get out in, in trouble on the left side. So this would be an, uh, an example of White getting a big attack in this game. And so trying to live in the corner um, was one option, but not so attractive. Otherwise, if black plays something like this, there's still some stuff that can happen on the left side there. There's still some... white can still make some trouble for black. Um, but also on this side, um, you have to figure out what's going to happen with this. Um, for instance, this kind of thing could happen on the left. If white plays this cut here, then white can use it to, to break through on this side. And so this is something white could do in a case that white um, has potential to capture that black group on the left. So this kind of invasion is still there. It makes it sort of difficult for black to finish off the left side uh, with just one move. And so that's, uh, it looks like a very adventurous move. It's putting some pressure on the white group. And the problem with this kind of move is that um, I'm not sure that it's actually surrounding black. So like if black does something like this and something like this, Black could probably actually wedge here, and um, like this, for instance. Um, we're not sure that it's actually Black who's in trouble here. Could be White. Um, or Black would just leave that, maybe, and play something in the corner. So playing something in the corner would be, for instance, something like this. And this would be looking at a connection on the second line. And, and White would have to be doing something about the weakness in the center fairly soon. So that's what Black is sort of setting that up with this Knight's move. And instead of trying to surround the Black group, White plays here, which is an interesting move. This is taking away Black's base in the corner. So once White has played here, there's no way Black can make a base. And it's sort of making a, it's taking it one step closer to getting two eyes for White. So, um... White's not going to allow Black to s surround this, this group. Um, but at some point, um, White can play something like this, and White will be able to make two eyes for that group. So, for instance, even something like this, um, White, if White needs to, White's going to be able to make two eyes for this group. On the other hand, um, on the other hand, if Black plays here, and White continues like this, White still can make two eyes by capturing that black stone. And if black connects here, black only has one eye. So this would be an exchange that established the fact that now black does not have two eyes. It's important to, to get those stones on the board, because if white had not played that marked stone, black would have had a potential life in the corner. So 
um, making sure that black cannot live, it would make moves like this much more dangerous for black. So um, black probably wants to play something like my snap judgment would be to, to play here and extend. Or black would like to be able to make um, use of the weakness um, below. So for instance, something you see sometimes in that Joseki in lever left is black doing stuff like this and doing stuff like this, which would be a way to try to take advantage of these potential forcing moves here to get a slightly, in this case, maybe black would be able to this is sort of borderline. It might be safer to, to be playing something like this. So I would be thinking in this direction at least. Although it might be safer just to play the extension. Okay, black played in the corner. So if white leaves that, black still has the option of living. So that would be, for instance, if white plays away and black plays here. This is still going to be okay. So um, black can actually live with this one in this case. So it would be sort of natural for white to continue up to this point, and maybe he's going to leave it now. So black, if black connects here, that's already dead, so it's not very effective. Uh, it's not a good use of one move if black doesn't have two eyes. Black could play here. In this case, if black connects next in the corner, it's going to be alive. And so white might play like this. In this case, black has only one eye, but does have sente. So um, black could play that exchange, or black could just leave it for the time being. Um, and when I say leave it, I would mean maybe with this move, black would leave it. But if I were playing with white, I, I, I would expect white to, to wedge here. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what white was trying to do. Oh, okay. White played the pin. Oh, white played this one. Um, well, this is going to end with black having sente. And white does seem to have maybe one eye locally. It's, it's not even, I don't really understand this movie either. Um, because it's, uh, I don't like the fact that it's ending in gote. Black's going to have sente after that. Okay, so locally white has to connect underneath. Um, and if white doesn't do that, it looks like black... Um, looks like black can make two eyes. I guess maybe not. So I um, maybe I'm starting to understand now. Um, why did white play b16 instead of slide and attach? A slide or attach. Well, attaching was conceivable. Sliding is probably not such good shape. Um, let's, let's start with that question. Sliding is sort of bad shape when black plays here and white, um, white has to make a connection. So white didn't want to do that. Um, so for instance, if white plays here, if it's like this, it is a kind of an awkward shape. Um, well, it's not really succeeding and giving black a lot of trouble here. So um, basically he didn't like the fact that black would play this move later. And even if white adds a stone, um, so black's probably going to play here for the time being. Even when white adds a stone like this, it's not a secure shape because black can still be doing that. Black can, um, white still has to worry about this move. So um, as white adds stones, for instance, five would be a move that white would probably be thinking of playing, but it's not working so well when black has that attachment at eight, with which black can cut white off if white plays like this. So white um, cutting off those groups in the center could be very effective for black. And the fact that um, 
yeah i think it, it it's worthwhile for black to be cutting white off like this so that's uh the, the shape reason for playing this the fact that when white does play another move um it does have a, a very good shape in the form so that that beats playing uh b17 and then playing at eight it's better to have the stone at the mark point so that makes sense to me um i think i'm starting yeah white didn't play the following move so i was expecting white to play something like this and that's why i didn't like white's clamp there and so when white um and i was telling you that if white plays away um if white plays away black can play here and have actually um if white plays this way this is actually a living shape or if white connects solidly um then at least this is a living shape so black had this um it turns out by playing that exchange there white's made it more difficult for black to live here so um if black plays here White's not going to, uh, okay, let's see. Let's get back to the game. White played here. So if black plays here now, um, it's not really 100% alive. So it's it's not as if white's going to be doing something immediately. Um, but for instance, um, a realistic potential would be for white to play here and force black to play this, which is, it's painful enough, the, the way black is forced to put two stones in there. Uh, if white plays here locally, um, now, if we ignore this weakness at five, if we ignore that, then it's actually sort of difficult for black to live because um, this is not alive. And if we say black plays here, and we say this is forcing, black has to rely on forcing moves like this in order to get the second eye. But um, this is pretty far-fetched because uh, when white does something like this, black has forcing move on this side. So it's um, it's just not it's not really working for white. So that's not an issue. So black can live with three and five here. So this would be alive. And white's not going to play it too. But it is sort of painful. It is painful when white does something like this and black is forced to play. Um, to live with only three points of territory would be a bit painful. So that's the idea behind white's clamp at B18 and it's working. It's a good move. Okay, so what black would like, um, so um, I showed you that black can live in the corner with this and that it's just a bit um, painful. So maybe black's going to try to break through. Oh, okay, he did that. So black's alive. Um, white... Um, white shape on the outside is a bit flimsy, so white has to deal with that at some point. White also wants to try try something on the left side of the board too. So um, it's a good question where white is going to invade the left side. That, that's something that white could be doing fairly soon. So white has a number of ways to do it. For instance, uh, playing somewhere close here like this or this. These would be shape moves attacking the black group. So basically, this is a very direct th threat to push through and cut. Black would answer it here. And the problem is that this is this is having an effect on the white group also. So there's a weakness that is created and that um, white's not connected there. So if white has to come back here, that move at one, while well, it looked like it was a a vital shape move, the fact that black could handle it with sente uh, made it less um, less effective. And so other moves that white could be thinking of doing would be something like this. But it looks like he's played a move already. So back to the game. Now, uh, yeah. Now that's a very light looking move. Uh, white's thinking about the center here. So white's looking to make some territory in the center. This group that white has in the lower left, this group here, and, um, the, the, on the, in the lower left part of the board, 
it's not really connected to White's group on the right. So it's something that I would be a bit worried about if I were right. But uh, in general, moves like this, um, moves like this on the fifth line, we're seeing more of them after AI because when you're reducing your opponent's territory, uh, there is a has always been a tendency to be trying to get down into the fourth and third lines, um, going lightly like this from the fifth line. Um, it's a pretty common shape now. It's, it's um, just the idea that you can give that third line, and that this area. Uh, in the center is actually pretty important just controlling it um, because otherwise the white group would be the white wool there wasn't very strong to start with so not only is white trying to get some territory in the center white is also reinforcing a group that was not so strong so right now the focus of the game the lower left corner for the time being it's alive so it's it's not so important anymore and White's group next to it on the left side um, is a potential liability because those those knight moves at um, G14 and um, I15 that those two knight moves um, next to each other that shape is not a very good connection. So White does have to be aware of that, and will be putting stones in to reinforce it fairly soon. Sometime as, as White, it, just, we just need one more black stone close to that and white will have to um, do something more. Uh, does B14 help white shape now? Uh, not really. It's not going to be a forcing move anymore. Um, and it doesn't have any effect in the corner. So actually, B14 is a move that black might be playing. For instance, one of the reasons that white was not immediately jumping at the opportunity to play this and force black to play here is that uh, black's probably going to answer it on this side first and, and wait for white to play something and then take the one stone. Black does that. So... Um, white, the fact that White can play here, this is the B14 that uh, Thumper was talking about. Um, it's a big move, but at this point in the game, it's not forcing. Um, white does want to keep it in the future, uh, keep the opportunity to play it, because in many cases, it's going to give that White group an eye if White plays here. So the potential of being able to play here is sort of worth it. Um, but White's not going to play it in the near future. So white's threatening um, another move towards the left side, I think would be pretty, um, white would start to be uh, attacking. So for instance, if black plays, um, it's sort of hard even to find a, a move for black to play, but if black plays away and we get a shape like this, you can see white's starting to attack that black group um, fairly strongly. So this would be uh, what white is trying to do here. <clears throat> And if I was black, I would be trying to find a move um, that defends the left side. It's just um, hard to see how that's going to be a black territory as it stands. So like black would be thinking of playing something like this. White can always uh, do this and, and get into the black territory. So um, finding the best point for black. And of course, if black plays the other way on the third line, now this is going to be a territory. But also this stone in the center um, is liable to get cut off in this release. So that's kind of the dilemma that Black has faced with, um, he, he wants to surround the territory. Okay, a knight's move. So um, he's allowing White to connect that knight's move. Uh, but uh, at this point on the fourth line, there's still the cut there. So. All right, so so uh, Black's going to handle that 
kick, I would call it, um, local loot. Um, but yeah, so black does have something happening. For instance, this kind of thing is a threat that black has against the white group. In some cases, black would uh, play play it from this direction. Um, this would be another way black would try to cut off the white group. So black has aim is aiming at things like this. And white is playing this annoying move first, uh, just to create some cutting points in the black shape. So if we compare that to white does have that wedge at F14 to worry about. So if white dealt with it by playing a bamboo joint here, that would connect white also. Um, but it, black's shape on the outside would be stronger. So that's, I, I think this move makes sense. So it, it's white gets the clamp here, um, just getting some nasty forcing moves in before white has to defend that group on the side. Oh, yes. And Rick Rubenstein was asking about that. I guess what I just said about the lower side uh, sort of answers that question. So I'll leave it. Okay, so black is connected. And what white got was two forcing moves from, from the general area of the center of the board. And locally, white would like to connect, uh, continue with a knight's move there. So that would be... Um, okay. Uh, something around here would be a, a very big move in the center of the board. And the question is, how is white going to handle this kind of attack? Ah, oh, he decided he couldn't. Okay, so white's played another move. White answered here. So this handles that shape there. So if we look at the two ways uh, black could have uh, cut white off. Uh, there's this way. And white just captures the one black stone. Or this way, which is again, um, it's a very short, it's going to be a ladder in this direction, so it's not working. So with this knight's move, white connected the white group. And uh, I think just, I, I just think that the center is big, so somewhere in this direction. I would probably play here without thinking deeply about it. Um, but maybe black wants to think about playing a bit further, closer to the center would be an idea maybe. So this would be an option. Or playing against the white stone like this would be another way to build towards the center, I guess. So we're still looking at a position where white's territory is on the lower side. I guess it's getting close to 30 points there. Black has territories all over the place, but they're all relatively small. So it looks like this is going to be a fairly close game. I think the territory looks close. Okay, Godev89 is giving us the time, I think. That's 13 minutes for Yama and 39 minutes for Miyuti. That's, that's, yeah, it sounds about right. Okay. Um, he's still looking at that weakness there in the white shape. So um, it's not as if black immediately has a way to cut white, but it um, is a very weak shape that white has there so for instance in this case black could start um one move that black could use would oh yeah it's white's turn so yeah one move that black could use would be this one um, with this forcing move and like this so it's not as if black could um, immediately cut from this side uh, because that would still be a ladder that would still be a ladder so that's not working yet but one, one of the things that black can do is uh, cut white's two stones off in the center, um, which would usually be good enough. So there is a threat with this.
So White's sort of afraid of that move at J15, but would like to be thinking about a counterattack also. So we'll see how he deals with that. Okay, bit quiet, so I'll, I'll I'll just make a variation. So yeah, so White would like to be doing stuff like this, and it looks like for the time being, Black does have to be a bit careful here. So for instance, if we do this immediately, uh, then the White group, the Black group, only has four liberties, so it's not going to be enough. At this point, White's group has five liberties already, and usually White's going to get an extra liberty on the side. So I'm, I'm talking about uh, this position, it would be six liberties. So even Black um, usually does not have, like this would be uh, the Sekito squeeze, which is sort of dangerous. But if Black manages to do it that way, uh, White does only have four liberties. Uh, which is enough in this case. So it's, it's still bad for black. So it is conceivable that black can play at this point and reduce white's liberties, but it's not going to be enough. So that's why if white plays here, black's going to have to do something to extend out towards the center before black can, um, can play that move at J15. Oh, okay. Okay, we got a game move. Good. So let's see, what would Black do? Black would, um, pushing through and cutting here, it's easier to do the bad moves. So yeah. So this would be probably just not working. It looks again like Black is being captured here. So pushing on this side, playing a Knight's move. Uh, these would be shape moves that I would be thinking of playing. So the knight's move, it looks safer, but it does sort of push white towards attacking black on the left. Uh, so something worth thinking about. Uh, this is a bit, uh, a bad shape, really. But it does, um, it does leave more potential to be doing stuff like this. So it would uh, still be reinforcing the idea of playing this attachment of three. This is really what black is trying to set up, the attachment at three. Oh, the nice move. Okay. So White would like to be able to push out into the center. And as we've seen in previous games, Yama uh, is okay with having a weak group. So for instance, if we imagine a variation like this, and, um, and something like this happens, um, well, actually, this is probably just bad for black. So I, I've sort of exaggerated um, in the way I set it up. But this is the kind of thing that Yama can sometimes get into, and he finds ways to save the group, uh, while usually I would be in trouble if I got into this. Thing. So it's, this is a kind of an example of the type of thing that he, he feels okay with doing. He, he's really happy if he has more territory, and he has a group that looks like it's going to die. Because he's pretty good at um, handling them. So it's a, the general idea is an example of uh, what he's, he likes to do. Although I, would take it, I wouldn't take it so far if it was my own game.
Yes. TLS was talking about leaky moves that pro plays. Um, leaky. Yeah, I, I sort of find, find that hard to understand, but maybe, yeah, this is the kind of move he's talking about. I think the idea with um, that is that um, if you have a very rigid plan that you cannot change, then it's usually bad news because your opponent is trying to avoid the worst um, possibilities. And so if your plan is limited in that way, it's probably not going to work. And so the plans have to be somewhat fluid. So um, it's not easy to put it in a nutshell what exactly Black is trying to do here. Um, Black is sort of trying to demolish the lower side, but is playing this sequence with the knowledge that White's not going to allow him to do it. So that, that's what White is doing with this move. White is defended here. And the lower side, after all, is going to be White's territory. So there was a point here where it looked like maybe Black was going to take away that territory from White. Um, or White was going to allow that to happen. And it turns out White defended it after all. And so I think it's the fluidity, fluidity of their plans sometimes which make uh, professional games relatively difficult to understand. But we have the same problem with AI, so it's, it's, I guess it's all even. Okay, Rick Bubenstein was asking if white pushes and black tanukis, would it be a good exchange for black? And locally it would probably be bad. So I think the move being talking about is this knight's move. And if white pushes and black plays away, and white would probably capture it. Could be tricky. It looks like white's probably going to capture it though. In which case it would be a bad move. Locally it would be a loss and it would be a question of how much black is getting back. So sometimes there's something on the other side that's really important and then it's okay. But in this case, I think black would be, would probably just continue for a while. Actually in, in that variation where I was having black playing away maybe too many times, um, it, it's still okay at this point. I, I would still say it's okay at this point. Um, if black, if white doesn't have this stone of seven. So maybe I was overdoing it when I played the black move here. In this fight, uh, white does have to worry about White has to has to worry about this still. So there's still some Aji there, which can happen if White loses some liberties in the center. And my feeling is that Black should be able to handle this one. So I would extend once or twice at least for White. And yeah, so White defended. It's not. And now Black can just sacrifice everything in the area. So Black has cut on the upper side. He's going for more territory. Yeah, that's very much like him. And he can get that white stone on the side with Sente. So if black plays here, that's going to be a peep. And he's going to be able to capture that um, white stone with this peep. So pushing through there is another big move. So it's, it's sort of Sente for black. Um, as for white, white does have this move now. So white can cut off the one black stone. So that's why white actually, uh, the main reason why white connected on the fourth line here was because white has this honey to capture a black stone. Vic Prague is saying it's interesting that white shapes have weaknesses all over the board and black shapes are all solid. So in a way you could say that white shapes are more efficient. So using less stones, more spread out to create um, connected shapes. So he was trying to play more quickly to control large areas of the board. And in a, a game like this, if white can secure some territory in the center, then it's all going to come together. It's going to work to a certain degree. Or if black can demolish the center and start taking advantage of those weak, weak connections, um, for instance, in areas like in areas like this, and it's not going to work yet. But if black gets a stone somewhere around here and starts forcing white to be playing moves to defend all of these stones in the vicinity, 
then it's going to start to look good for black. So it's a question of whether this whole structure that white has is going to function as part of a territory in the end, or is it going to be attacked by the black stones? Okay, Yama has um, seven minutes, and me has 32. And I think you can do with just the one eye for Yama. He, um, it's, um, the sound doesn't change in Japanese. They, they, they have the same so sound for an eye. So it was interesting here that Black actually um, took the option of losing a, a tempo in order to set up some potential threat of a Hane on the fifth line. Okay, yeah, so White actually answered that. So if White had uh, not answered that, and played on this side, then white can cut off the two stones, but there's going to be a problem here when black plays here. So let's see what the ladder looks like. This is going to be a ladder, right? So this is going to be a ladder heading off to the center when white's captured. So white can't do that. So that's how that's how effective the honey at four is going to be. And it's really lousy shape for white, even if white doesn't get captured in the ladder. This is probably going to be bad. So White Black was looking at that move, um, which is especially effective uh, when White has played played this one. When White has played this one, and it fills one of White's liberties, so it makes the honey up for more effective. So that's one reason why White cannot immediately play at one because of Black's honey at four. And there's also the fact that even if White plays away, Black's probably looking at an attack here with, uh, in some cases, Black can attack again here. So uh, there's that potential attack that Black was setting up. While I was saying that Black could take Sente with uh, with a play here, uh, this would allow White to sort of squeeze. So for instance, um, if we assume this shape, everything is forcing. So White has a very solid connection there. So he, he was giving White less of a solid connection. So that's sort of interesting how it was, it was Kote, but it was sort of Sente. Okay, again, he's dealing with the threat of White's Hane on the third line. So White's Hane at 05. And, and if, uh, so yeah, so this is stopping White from cut those, cutting those black stones off by creating that uh, forcing move there at this point. So there's nothing doing there for White. And White does have to deal with the connection in the center. So I, I would be expecting White to be doing something like, for instance, this to connect up in the center. Otherwise, those three white stones on the right will be cut off. So Black's going to wait for that, and, and then it will be time for Black to do something towards the center. So this would be my first idea. Or if White plays on this side, um, even if Black jumps out, he might choose this one, which is a bit more active. The right side is too big. So if white surrounds the center and gives up the right side, the right side is going to be too big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, Abdullah RL was asking, was just checking, but yes. Um, P5 is a forcing move. So black is connected up or as it stands. Black doesn't have to do anything. So the, the reason he was doing it with this move here was that it gives black more options to sort of cut off those three white stones on the right side. So it's a, an active move. <clears throat> and it looks like Yama is probably pretty much maybe five minutes left and Miyuting has almost half an hour.
So this is sort of like the, it looks like it might be the last chance for them to have a, a huge fight. If white tries to play something in the center. And black plays something on this side. And then it's going to develop into a fight where white is going to try to save those stones on the right. And they're going to get tangled up in the center. So this would be an option for, in this case, it would turn into a big fight, I think. And Black's group on the left side here is potentially going to be isolated too. So this would be the most exciting variation. Whereas um, if if White just protects here and Black plays something like this, then it looks like it's going to be kind of a territorial game. Um, they could be ending um, playing an end game here, a normal territorial end game. Maybe one of the first cases in this whole tournament. Usually people, when they have relatively short um, time controls, quite often it gets into a big fight. Okay, Nico Kent was asking, do I um, offer one-on-one -on -one coaching? Um, and disregarding strength, actually. I do. Um, I'll, I'll give you a... a link. That's a good opportunity for me to push my teaching. You can go here to my page and see how it's set up. So it's a um, usually the format of no oh, that's that's my um, sorry about that. Let's take that off. This one. Uh, teaching games lessons on OGS that I give quite often. So uh, monthly le lessons come with uh, one of those tiers. Otherwise, you can go to my channel. Let's let's. Uh, it's pinned at the top, but in case you don't see it, I'll post it again. Uh, it's my channel. If you sign up to my channel, you will find um, uh, uh, a section, uh, a playlist of videos for beginners, and they're pretty good up to. Um, most Q players can gain a lot from watching those videos. So that's something, but they're also, they're set up so that beginners are supposed, to, I'm hoping the beginners can understand them. So um, those are, just watching those videos will make a big difference. If you decide not to do the other thing. So uh, that link that I put up first was the Patreon link where I give personal lessons. Oh, thank you, Go Baduk Weichi. That's the three names of Go. Okay, let's get back to the game variation, see if they've done anything. Okay, White played the Knight's move. So this is the more exciting variation, where um, Black is going to try to attack White on the right side of the board. And if Black does nothing, this is probably... Um, White's getting some territory in the center now. So that upper left part of the center, which is sort of turning into a... Um, a, a white territory there. That's that's going to be enough. So black has to be pretty active now. So Derek Neal is asking me if I like the experience with being on Patreon. Um, well, um, since I've spent most of my life just uh, playing Go, it's it's really good for me to have a platform like that where um, I don't have to worry about dealing with the money so much is um, they, they take care of that part for me so um, when people want to support me it's a it's a very good um, platform in that way and it, it, it takes a lot of the stress out of it for me and because I started doing that it gave me an opportunity to meet a lot of people in the West and make myself more accessible to them. so that was I, I think it's a success in that way Okay, so let's take a look at the territory. Yeah, so black has territories all over the place. Um, so in the upper left, I'd say black has more than 15 points. And close, about 15, let's add the upper left and the upper right and say they add up to be about 30 points. Black has um, 
somewhere around 10 points on the right side, a few points in the lower left corner, probably a bit more on the left side, so close to 50 points, it's less than 50 points for fun. And the only area that I would really count as white territory at this point yet, so like we have the lower side, the lower right corner to, to the lower side, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be a white territory, so that's about 30 points. Um, and then if we look at the center, um, I don't know how big it's going to be. And it's it's sort of, it's sort of fuzzy. It's an area that's going to be hard to calculate. Um, so what I do with a position like this, where I have an area that's uh, that I can estimate, like the lower side for white, and of course all of Black's territories are pretty easy, relatively easy to sort of estimate to a certain degree. So I have the lower side that is, well, I can sort of put a number somewhere around 30 points on that white territory. And then I say white needs so much territory in the center. So white needs, um, probably needs about 20 points because when white actually makes that center into a territory, black's going to be, for instance, playing moves like, um, playing moves like this from the sides. Black's going to get some extra points uh, on the side in the process of white making that center territory. So there, there's going to be some extra extra value for white, for black, that is, for instance, with stuff like this on the left side sometimes. Um, and that's going to, if we count that in, it's going to reduce the value of white center. The fact that white is surrounding the center is giving that to black. So we have to sort of subtract some something for that. And I'd say, so if white has 30 points and black has close to 50 points, and white gets 20 points in the center. Even though black will get a few points in the process of white surrounding that territory, it's going to be enough. So I'd say white needs close to 20 points in the center. And it's probably pretty close. Okay, Wee Wu King um, is giving us the information that Iyama just entered Byoyomi. And Mi still has 26 seconds. Uh, 26 minutes. Yes. Makes sense. It. Uh, make, makes sense, that is. Gareth White has also told us that, yes, they're probably w watching the live stream too. So, Black is moving into the center and still threatening to surround White on the right. And it's sort of looking at, um, for instance, moves like this, which would be threatening White's connection there. Um, connecting with a move like this is a bit painful. And Black's not really connected on, on the right there, so at some point, White does ha will have the option of cutting here at some point and playing something like this to, to cut that Black group in the center off. So Black has to be aware of the fact that at some point Black will have to go back and protect that cut. At this point, it's probably uh, not going to be that much of a good attack for white, since white's weak also, and black has potential to connect up in the center. Hmm. Kapiam Cup says that uh, Yama's winning rate has gone down to 33, and white has 67. Um, so it's, it's. I think it's the fact that white's um, center is... White, it looks like white's going to get some territory in the center. And it might be difficult for black. Oh, white's cut already. Um, I didn't expect it to happen so soon. So I actually showed this variation where white cuts. Black extends and white's probably going to play this way. And black can't leave it. But if black plays here, uh, white will play here. This looks maybe a bit dangerous for black. Black can, um, I wonder if this is going to be forcing. Okay, so maybe that's the idea here. So maybe white's even going to ignore if black plays there. It's just the four stones. So uh, a variation like this is what white is threatening to do. Okay, now it makes more sense to me. Black pushes through. All right, so um, white would uh, white has two ways to play this. White could extend, or white could wedge. 
So if white wedges here, white's going to be able to cut that black stone off. Yes, anything bef below 70% is probably equal enough um, as far as humans are concerned. It sort of looks okay for black, if you ask me. I, I mean, for white. Um, because white's going to get something in the center. Let's see how the game turned out. So, so we are going into this variation. So black's going to capture that. In Biomi, is it hard to divide your time between reading and counting? Now, that's a good question by uh, Rick Rubenstein. Um, if you try to count, then you... Um, it's a, probably a bad idea in Biomi. So, most of the players, um, even if they've only played this one-hour game, they have a pretty good idea of what, uh, how the territory stands. So... Um, Especially if they've had a longer time control, but even if it's just the one hour, to a certain degree, the players know, um, have a general idea of how much territory they need to get, and a kind of a feeling for what kind of end game they want to go into. And so, if they start counting territory instead of reading out variations, then they're going to get into trouble. It, it's it's going to be difficult to read it all out. So once you get down to your last minute like this, uh, as Iyama is right now, uh, the focus is mostly just on reading moves and reading out variations that you, you want to get into. And so um, my answer to the question is that basic, um, I think top players um, don't do so much counting, actually, towards the end of the game. If they run out of time, that is. Um, in my case, um, I like to leave some time so I, I feel a bit more con confident about how the score is going um, before I get into the beer. Okay, so um, now my guess as to what Black is sort of thinking of here, um, there is this move that White has to be careful of. And for the time being, White is probably okay. So if something like this happens and something like this happens, um, in this case, white is connected up and black is going to be in trouble um, if white starts, if white can cut black off with something like this, black's going to be in trouble. Um, so if we say instead of that, at some point black connects here, um, in this case, it starts to look like in some cases black's going to be able to cut white off. So that's what black is trying to set up here. And it's still, it's not going to work. Not yet. So it, it takes a bit more work to actually make it happen. Um, but this looks like the two stones that black has in the center of the board will be cut off and it's probably not, probably not going to work. Um, so like something like this. So it doesn't work yet, but it's the kind of, the, I, the general idea for black is that black is trying to set up an attack at two. Um, and it's not working yet. So the question is, how how is he going to work around that? Like, is Black going to start trying moves like this, which would um, be semi-forcing moves towards the center, and would have some potential. So, for instance, if we... Um, just a hypothetical sequence here. If we get a shape like this, um, and we say that this is also forcing, 
suddenly it's looking a lot more dangerous for white. So this would be an example of a dangerous situation for white. So that's how Black's plan, you might say, is sort of working here. But um, Black will probably have to reinforce... Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess that's what he's doing. So um, this is actually a very active move here. Where Black is trying to get another forcing move towards the center. So the way this works is... Um, white can cut here, and we're going to assume that white doesn't want to play this call. Uh, white captures the three stones, and when black plays here, it's going to be difficult for white to escape. So uh, maybe something like this. So that's that's the plan here. Black's trying to get this extra forcing move at six, which will um, make it difficult for white to escape on the right side. So he's setting up to, to play a decisive fight here. So it's not, um, when this happens, um, I'm not sure of this exact sequence, but when Black tries to do something like this, Black is giving up some points towards the lower side and is trying to get a big profit on the right side. It means that it's probably heading into a decisive fight here. It could be a dangerous fight for both sides. And so he's still preparing here. He's still trying to make some preparation. So when Black plays here, it, um, you get the impression that maybe he's looking at this move. So that could sort of calculate into the other thing. But it doesn't look like it's really working. So like there's this ladder here, which for the time being is okay for white. Let's just put the, yeah, white connected. And I, at this point, I'm not really seeing what black can do to make it work, because even if we assume five to be a forcing move, it takes a lot of doing. So we're probably look this kind of variation uh, where black is trying to threaten on both sides. It could be what he's trying to do. But again, it's not working. So, um, so just to demonstrate the kind of thing that maybe he was trying to... But of course, in this case, White's winning by one move. So it's not working. Back to the game. So Black pushed through and cut. Um, so it, it looks like he's going into that variation. Yes, where White is going to capture the Black Stones. And we'll assume that White's not going to play an Atari against the Stone at 2. So this would happen, and Black is going to try to cut these Stones off. If white just extends here, now that's going to give black an opportunity to take away a lot of white's territory in the center. And this would be, again, it would be hard to say who's winning again. So black would be playing something like this, maybe. Provided black can handle that group on the left. It looks okay. Looks like it's going to be over. Yes, oh, so that's this variation, this Jack Zeng. Um, I think it's going to be a good enough for Black if this happens. But we'll see how it, uh, like it, this is a realistic possibility here. Um, but I think Black has succeeded fairly well in this case. Okay, so Black is into this variation. I don't see how White can avoid it unless White is going to play the call. So let's, let's take a look at the call variation. So if white plays here, um, I was ex I'm expecting black to play the call now, or black can uh, this would be a fun variation maybe, and black plays something like um, this, and if white tries to escape, black connects and tries to go after the corner. Um, but of course white's going to capture here once. Um, I don't think it's going to work for black. So, yes. Um, so, the game is slowly proceeding. Um, at this point, um, it's one minute per move, and he's going to use that move to think ahead. So, every time Iyama plays a move, he's going to use the whole minute, probably. So, that's, that's why um, it's taking some time here. 
And so if white plays here, black's going to get that extra. He might not even play it immediately. And is going to be able to attack here. And if white plays here, then it's a different story. Because um, it's just so much more dangerous um, for black. So black would really want to play this call. And where is he going to play a call? He's, he set up this call thread, I guess. I guess he set up this call thread. So if white finishes the call, black can capture here. Uh, this is pretty bad, too. Hmm. Maybe black can survive. But it's going to be painful. Um, so black would need another move on this side. And it's probably alive now. But these five zones are going to die. Uh, hard to judge. Otherwise, maybe white's going to continue with this one. And then white would have to find a cold thread. Let's just watch the game for a while here. So it's white's turn. Um, no, actually, uh, um, some people on um, Twitch are talking about whether this move that black played, I think they're talking about this move at I-14. So maybe it was a time tesuji, but um, my guess is that it's making the co threat when this happens, um, it's just increasing the value of this cold threat. So this would be uh, more valuable than cutting on the left at H15. So black's making that left side area. The wedging here and capturing the left side is a bigger move because black played that exchange. So it's actually setting up a cold threat. And yes, I don't really see black um, connecting if white plays in the target. It, it doesn't. And this is just my gut feeling is that this extra Aji is going to make it um, good for white, whatever black does. It doesn't seem to be working. So a final decisive code. This this could be a decisive code. It could be. Um, it's it could be the last fight of the game actually they haven't really left much room to be fighting viciously i was expecting a more a more wild game actually uh but this is the time for them to start the call and miyu ting he probably has um probably at least a quarter of an hour yes and go dave 89 is talking about that when he says it looks like he's taking his time um it was a point where i i would have just I, I would have felt justified to spend most of my remaining time thinking about the call. But he's played already, of course. Okay, interesting. Um, James Sedgwick says that fine art was showing white starting the call, and it changed its mind. So yes, computer programs do change their mind as they increase the number of playouts. And I seem to find that, um, like, I think some of it is in the very difficult positions. Um, sometimes it seems to be a factor of luck in there. Uh, maybe depending on which order they, the, the results come out in the playouts and which order moves that are about equal, which order it studies them, stuff like that. And so I get different results sometimes. And it's fascinating and annoying at the same time. Okay, Jack Zheng is asking about the bottom left group. And it's pretty much okay. Um, so yes, so that's worth uh, going into once more. 
So if we just ignore the code for now, let's say it's something like this. And white plays, white's going to play this way. And it's, it's, it's painful enough that black has to play here and, and live with a small territory. Um, but if white plays here and black plays here, if we just look at the corner situation, um, expanding it is not going to be good. This is going to be a dead shape. And so black has to play here. This is just about, um, just about the only move. And this is alive. And so the only potential problem is white's move here. And so it's going to be okay in almost every case when black can play here. And even disregarding the fact that 13 is forcing. Um, it's, it's alive as it stands. So because of that extra forcing move at 11, um, basically the extra forcing move here, yeah, it was 11. Um, black is alive, even disregarding the fact that black has a forcing move at C16. So it's alive. So, like, if white does something like this, um, again, it sort of depends on this. But it, maybe it's not even a big issue. Let's just say it's like this. Um, and this would be a seki. And this would be, if white plays this forcing move, this is going to be too many white stones inside black. So black's um, provided black has enough outside liberties, black's going to be able to finish it off. And you might notice in some cases black can even make a knight here. Although th this would actually be a potential call. But in either case, in any case, black has so many liberties on the outside that it's, it's not going to be an issue. So white's not going to get into that kind of thing. Okay. So they made the trade. So white played the call. White captured the call. And black captured the white stones on the left. And yeah, okay. Um, it's exactly the same as something I showed you. So black has a choice of connecting on the fourth line. I guess that's a choice too. That That's not outside of... Um, that's not inconceivable. Black could play here and play here. And... Okay. Stuff could still happen. Um, maybe black, okay, um, yeah. So black could be heading into that variation. Mm-hmm. Okay, Unsaven Statue is talking about um, multi-threaded. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit technical for me, actually. But how, how, how um, sometimes these algorithms can be uh, non-deterministic. So yeah, sort of um, sounds like it's something that be, could be happening with some of the uh, Go AIs. Okay, it still looks like a variation that I was making before, so let's just follow up with that. So white takes, black plays here. Um, it's not going to die, but it's going to be painful. You might actually play here. And another potential call. But like even if black plays here... It's not as if it's going to die. I think black uh, has more than one way. Black might play this way. <clears throat> and it would be a bit complicated again. But um, as I was saying, white can cut here. And black cannot capture the white stone at 7. So this white stone at 7 is connected. And the black stones, the six black stones in the center are going to be dead. And that looks like it's big to me. I think that's big to capture those black stones there. So black got a big white group on the left side. White got some extra territory on the lower side and towards towards the right, sort of. It, it's, white has pushed black around a little bit. And white got that 
group in the upper right, which is something like it's as close to 20 points that white gained there. So this look, it looks okay for white, but um, maybe maybe it's going to be another close game. Yes, Rick Rubenstein, I agree with you. So like when you when the territories are not changing so much and they're at least in the same places and they don't move around the board like this, then um, for, to a certain degree, you can rely on the calculation you made before you got into the second reading. But as Rick Rubenstein is saying, when, when you have these giant trades like this, um, you have to recount sometimes. And that's something that will be um, sort of difficult um, when you're in the middle of Ilium. In overtime, that is. Okay, so white took once. Yeah, that looks like a sensible move. And black connected. White played there. Um, black is going to need to cover it uh, at R10 to get two eyes. So the whole idea is that white has a forcing move at R7 that can capture those six black stones, five black stones. So let's do that again. Black has to play here to have enough room to live. And after this, it's sort of tricky, but um, this, it's tricky because I don't know exactly where he's going to play his next move. Um, but let's just say it's a lie. Um, and white's going to be able to capture this. So it's, this is the variation I'm expecting. And I think it looks good for white, but um, it's going to be an end game. And he still has some time, doesn't he? Okay, so black pushed through there. Black is just trying to establish that he always has a forcing move at Q12. It's not going to uh, make the light, the black group alive every time. It, but it does have a difference in how, it, how the shape turns out. It makes a difference there. Or maybe he's trying... To, oh, okay, I see what he's doing. So, yeah. Excuse me, I was, um, okay, let's just back up one move, and now I understand what Black is trying to do here. He was trying to get the forcing move immediately so that he could live with this one, and in this case, he would not be, uh, White can't capture here, so in this case, there's nothing doing there. Um, so he can live in this fashion, and white does not have the forcing move here. So black can answer that. So that, that was what black was trying to do um, by pushing through there. And now it looks like uh, locally black's not even alive. So if we say it's like this and like this, it's already dead. And so black will have to try to escape towards the center. So for instance, something like this is, is what he's trying to do here. And he won't play all of those moves on the right side either. So yeah, he pulled, he pushed it, pulled out. So he's, he's trying to escape towards the center. Um, the variation where he sacrificed five stones uh, in the upper right there was just too pain. It was too much territory. Okay. So let's follow the, the game for a while. Okay, so this is the peep, and black's going to have to connect there, and then um, it's a question of how white chases the black group. So let's take another look at the territory, just because it's changed so much. I'd say the black area in the lower left is something around 40 points. And the upper right corner, somewhere around 15 points. 
and the upper left corner is somewhere around 15 points. So black has something like 70 points of territory. White's uh, lower side is probably around 35 points at the uh, present time. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit more. So black has 70 points, white has 35 points. White needs about 30 points in the center. So uh, 30 points plus Comey would be good enough for white in the center. And so killing this black group on the right is, maybe it's not um, completely necessary. Maybe white can get away with not killing that black group. So um, one variation that I would be thinking of would be uh, it would be something like this and black should be able to escape somehow here so yeah something like this where white is just uh, consolidating a big territory in the center and this looks like it's well over 30 points so if we assume something like this Uh, this is sort of tricky. I, I don't, I don't know about this version. It might be better for what to put from the side. But like, Mac will get a few more points on the left side, but still has only slightly more than seventy points. If we say the lower side territory for white is something like thirty-five points, white has more than thirty-five points in the center too. So, this looks like it's going to be enough for white. So this is the variation that I would be thinking of. Yeah, so it looks like white could be heading towards that. But if white tries to capture the black group, then it could easily change to a position where um, white has to capture to win, which would actually would be more dangerous. It would be a more a swifter result, but it would be more dangerous for white. Okay. A. E. Solomon is saying maybe can live with S12 and avoid giving white R7. So that was what Black was trying to do there. Um, so going back to this variation, if white cuts here, that's what Black was trying to do. And so there's there's some logic to this one. Uh, in this case, white this would not be a forcing move towards Black's side group anymore, and Black would be connected up. And so Black would have saved all the stones there. So that makes sense. So that was this was white. Um, almost trying to kill black but it might be the best idea might be that variation i was thinking of where um white just chases black and uses this attack to to make a solid bound, uh, borderline there for white's ter territory in the center and you might notice that i sort of ignored this variation uh, this is a cool white probably doesn't want to get into it's too dangerous for white So for the time being, we're sort of heading into that variation. Um, we'll have to see um, how Mi Yuting handles this, uh, this potential attack, because I think it might be dangerous if he tries to actually kill the black group. I mean, dangerous for white, too. Okay, that looks like a forcing move. <laughs> it's probably too big for black to ignore that. It's something like 25 points to play uh, next at Q5, Q5 and capture those black things. Oh, but he didn't answer. Okay. So, um, Ab Abdallah RL is asking why White plays the Ko. Now, that was because um, he was in danger in the center. So, this this variation where White doesn't play the Ko was actually a lot more volatile than the game variation. So, in this, in this case, uh, when something like this happens, Black can actually probably capture White on them. That would be pretty big. Or if White pulls back here, this is sort of painful also, uh, having to pull back too many times. So uh, there's some problems with 
with this variation. And by playing the ko, he forced the trade. Um, and as far as I can tell, it looks like it's not bad for white, this trade. So white's getting some territory back. If white is just going to get the optimal territory in the center. So we were heading towards this variation where I was expecting black to answer here uh, like this. And white was probably going to play like this to just to secure the center territory. And this would make it too easy. So black um, answering at 1 to 5 is a huge move. It's something like 25 points. But uh, maybe he decided it wasn't going to be good enough to win the game. So black's played on the outside and has given this to white. It still looks good for white. Actually, um, okay, Joni Larry was asking, uh, probably mispronouncing that name, is it? Um, yeah, but uh, would it have been feasible for Black instead of connecting at R12? No, no, he couldn't sacrifice the stones. And Victor Prague, uh, he couldn't have sacrificed the, those stones. They were pretty big, I think. Uh, and Vic Prague was asking, wasn't it better for Black point-wise to play R11 first and make White play inside? And that's something that's worth thinking about, but I think it's not true in this case. So we're talking about this position where um, it was like this. And um, why not play here is the question. Oh, okay, it's, it's, um, so for instance, at this point, if Black plays here, or if Black... Uh, could do it this way also. Uh, wouldn't this be a profit for black? I mean, it's usually pretty much the same. So um, if we assume a, a shape like this after all, then white's going to connect here with sent in. The points here, pretty much the same. It's, it's not a big difference. Um, and I think he was a bit worried that white would simplify the game by not going through with that for reason also. So maybe that was something he was thinking about. In, in other words, maybe he was worried that white would just simplify the game uh, by playing something towards the center. Um, maybe after, after this kind of thing. I don't know, but it, it's an idea. I, I can't say it's completely wrong. So this trade, it looks like it's good for white, but um, maybe it's a fairly close game. R16 is a big move. So, so that's Godave89 um, talking about R16. Exactly. It's a very big move because after black plays there, white's going to end up putting some stones in that territory. So um, five points, about five points for black, but there's um, something like, something around five potential moves inside white's territory that white's going to end up playing. Okay, so finally it looks like we're heading into an end game. The value of the center has been reduced greatly. Um, but there's very few other places to play. So like there's some small end game moves on the sides now in the upper right corner. On the left side, all of those moves on the left side, they're not actually so big, even though black has some potential to surround on the third line. Um, those kind of moves are probably comparable to capturing in the lower right corner. Capturing those two black stones is uh, actually it's a fairly big move. 
Um, so surrounding the center as much as possible is going to be a fairly big move for white. So I'm talking about, for instance, white's connected here, still threatening the black stone, so black stone connect here. And um, maybe something like this. Putting some pressure on the black group and then surrounding the center would be a common sense way of playing. It would give white um, more than 15 points there. So it would be a significant center territory. And so white would have, let's see, let's count the territory again. Let's say black plays, hmm, let's see, it's sort of difficult to choose how to continue here. Yeah, white, white had that capture of those five black stones on the right there. That's pretty big. So it's, that's almost 25 points just there. And then white has something like more than 15 points on the left part of the center. So that's already over 40 points. White has more than 30 points on the lower side. Mm -hmm. So white, white is in the low 70s, so 70 something points for white. Uh, black has about, well, close to 40 points in the lower left corner. And the upper right corner now is more like 10 points. The upper left corner is something like 50, 15 points. So that's 25 and something like 40 points, so 65. Um, looks like white's ahead. So it, it, a lot depends on what line white gets to surround the center. I think that's pretty important. Back to the game then. Okay, he didn't do that. So capturing capturing here. He pushed through once, he played to this point, and then he captured. So this is actually a very big move. Um, it was an area where white would potentially have to put a lot of stones in, and it took away a potential forcing move from black. So for instance, if white tries to cut black with something like this, um, white's going to get into trouble on this side because white has a shortage of liberties. So by um, taking this one stone, white has gotten rid of that potential shortage of liberties. Not only is it big as far as territory is concerned, um, it's taking away this forcing move from black. So that's why black had to add a stone here in the center to secure the connection. So with this white's territory in the lower right, it's more like 40 points. And white has over 20 points in the on the right side. And it's probably going to do something about the center now. And we'll probably have something close to 15 points. So that gets close to 40 points just in the center area, if we count the left and the right side. And about forty points in the, uh huh, forty points in the lower. That gets white close to forty, eighty points. So I, I still think white has an advantage. These end games are tricky because once white starts to surround the center, black's going to get a lot of forcing moves that will increase black's territory. So that's what makes it relatively close, but it still looks difficult for black. And um, Abdallah Ri, or is it L RL? Um, oh, no, it was. Um, who asked that question? I, I, I sort of lost. Um, I lost track. Someone was asking about the trade between White's group on the left and the extra profit White got in the corner, plus the extra profit White got on the upper right part of the right side. So it's probably. Um, 
firmly about even the the left side was pretty big also it's not just the uh the nine white stones which is 18 points just in the captured stones there there's also some empty space attached to that white group so it's um, over 30 points the black gained there but that black ter territory that was on the right side that's about 10 points that disappeared close to 10 points and white got 25 points um in the upper right and several points in the corner so maybe a slight um the points are a slight gain for white while white's uh, territory in the center has been decreased to a certain degree so white's not surrounding the center this was a big move too of course Okay, so this was a big move, stopping white from making territory on the left, and at the same time it's reducing white's center. So white, uh, black can make a, a an attachment at um. That's e eight, an attachment there. Let's just put it on the board. So if white plays something like this now, black can attach here and reduce white's territory. So that's how blacks um move there is working this was a forcing move Well, yes. Uh, Gold Prince 91 is saying White's simplifying the game uh, by not going for the center territory. And I agree, yes. So by reducing the potential areas where Black can make territory um, is a, an idea for how to surround the center. I mean, for how to simplify the game by not surrounding the center. Um, but White does have to be careful there because if Black breaks into the center, that's what this move is doing. White's avoiding Black from breaking through there um, after which there would be a lot of issues with whether or not white was connected in the center. So white does have to keep the center group as healthy as possible. So that's what white is doing with this move, um, securing a connection in the center. Oh yes, so uh, just to talk about uh, the future of this tournament, um, we're in the 10th round. And the last batch of games is going to be played this week. So in China and Japan here, it's uh, a Monday. And so there's going to be a, a game played every day until the tournament is over. So it could be five games, depending on how it turns out. So there's going to be a game between the winner of this game and the final Korean player, who is Xi Jinping. So, and that's going to be the next round tomorrow. Um, I won't be able to do a live stream for that one. And then there's going to be another game Wednesday. So it's going to be every day. I'm, I'm probably going to do a live stream for the Wednesday game. And maybe I'll be able to do a recap of the 11th round when I do that. So that's going to be two days from now, um, starting at the same time. So that's going to be the ne next live stream about that I do about this tournament and then depending on how it turns out there's going to be games on thursday and friday also 
So it sort of depends on how it turns out. So for instance, if Yama, um, it's not looking so good for Yama in this game at this point, but if we say he wins all his games, then he would finish up um, in three games because there's just one Korean player and two Chinese players. Um, if Yu, Mi Yuting wins all his games, then um, he has to beat two Japanese players and Xin Jing So. So we would have to win three more games. And, and so four games, including this one. Or um, he's going to be, the winner of this game is going to be playing Xin Jing So next. So if Xin, Zhou, Xin Jing So was to win, he has to beat all of the Chinese players and all of the Japanese players. So he would have to beat Mi Yuting and KJ and um, Ichiriki and um, Yoseki. Okay, looks like um, Yama is going to start a call here uh, to cut off uh, the white stone on the left side. So strangely enough, it's going to turn into a position where black getting some territory on the on the left side after all and white is surrounding the, the center after all so it's sort of reverted to that variation where black got the whole left side after all so if white connects on the second line this is going to be another big call So like if white does something like this, this is, um, it depends on the cold trips, of course. But when I look at the overall position, I don't think white has so many cold trips. Like I think black has cold trips towards white's position on the lower side, the right side, white center looks a bit thin also. So I, I get the feeling that black has an advantage in cold trips. But if we assume it's like this, then black does get the whole left side. So if white um, disconnects here, then black will get the whole left side. Um, continuing to play in the center, it's still a fairly big move. So a move like this, for instance, would, it would still be a big move. Or maybe something towards the upper side. This is a fairly big move, too. This is um, It would be a big move for black to play there. So it's a big move for white. We're coming to the end, actually. There's not so much end game for them to continue playing. There's the center, and there's this huge point on the left side. There's the question of, are they going to play a ko on the left side? And the end game towards the upper side of the board. There's, there's still some stuff that has to be done. And that's it. So we're coming close to the end here. And it's looking good for white. It's looking good for, for Mew team. Okay, so they're pretty much, they're getting close to the final stages of the endgame. So once the shape in the center of the board is fixed, it's it's going to be relatively easy endgame. So for, for black, black would still like to be, that whole central area was um, fairly loosely connected white stones. And so the fact that white seems to be getting away with all of those two spaces two space jumps and large knights moves and stuff like that. And these are all forming um, a boundary line for white's territory is why this whole thing is turning out to be very efficient for white. So black would have liked to find an opportunity earlier in the game to sort of force white to be making, adding stones to connect those stones up. So, so the center, surrounding the center here for white, it's not just the territory, it's the extra value of the whole thing being very efficient and what was really a weak white group is, is turning into a territory group. So white gave up the left side. Now let's see what this has done to the black territory. So let's just assume to make it simpler, let's have white play this in-game move.
So that whole side there, including the center territory, is something like 60 points, plus a few points on the upper side. And black has 12 points there in the upper right corner. Um, so let's see, uh, 75 points. Uh, a few points in the center, and maybe something on the upper side. So it's, it's, it's some 75 plus points. So yeah, I'd say white has close to 40 points in the center on the right side. It's still not very well defined there in the center. And more than 40 points on, on the lower side. So it's something like 8 points. Yeah, so it, it's going to be, I think it's going to be tough for black to win even before Comey. Okay, let's get back to the game variation. It sounds like they're playing moves. Okay, so white connected, played one attachment there, and is uh, building on the center. So this is actually the most aggressive way for white to surround the center. And if black pushes through on the right... Now if white plays here, this is probably not so good because uh, black can break out into the center. So this is this is probably not profitable for white. White's getting messed up on the left side. Probably losing more on the left than white gained on the right. So I think the idea is that white is going to allow black to connect there, and it was just a very forceful move there. And um, locally, white could just play here, but even just this one exchange and then playing here. Maybe Maybe this is then game that I would be thinking of playing. Of course, if white continues playing here locally, yeah, the local move would have been too big. Okay, yeah, that one looks like it works also. When white plays here, he's probably going to add stone to the center. So I think the idea is that he's going... Um, well, if he had um, pulled back, the idea would have been just to leave it now and play this big Jose in the lower side. I think when he plays here, the idea is that he's going to add a stone here and finish off the center. And it looks like it's okay to do that, yes. So in this case, white's going to finish off the center, and black is going to get this point, which is, this is a pretty big point, but um, maybe this is simplifying the game.
Uh, no, actually, uh, Victor Prague, um has it backwards, and it's it looks like White is going to win the game. Okay, where did it go wrong for Black? Well, in that fight in the lower left, I think uh, at some point Yama must have messed up in the lower left. Let's take a look at that. So I'd say um, back here, let's see if I can make a diagram. Yeah. So let's let's go back to, okay. So I, I said this capture in the upper right was very much like Yama. And it wasn't really necessary. He's trying to put pressure on his opponent. Um, but I would have, um, just to say how I would have tried to win the game, I would have been split between just playing here or kicking once here first. So um, maybe something like this would be um, a bit more, in a way, it's more greedy and taking a bit more territory, kicking a corner also. Um, but it, it's working as it, um, in its own way, it is working. Or whether this this move would be more solid, and it would be maybe thicker. So maybe this would be better. Some something reinforcing this group. Basically, um, when you look for big moves in a fairly wide open position like this, you do look for the groups that are not completely settled yet. So this is the one area, the lower left here, um, where. We can't call this black group a territory until black plays something like one. And so it changes a group that in the game it did become, get into trouble a little bit. It was forced to make a life. And if black plays here, it's just a territory. So changing the status of these groups, um, playing close to weak groups and changing how they, um, their status that way is the added value to that is sometimes more important than just points. So this move that Yama played, it was sort of like an endgame move. Um, it was big because if white plays it, if white plays it, black's going to have to add a stone, something like this. So there is that fact that it was a big move, um, but maybe not worth it. So this is one thing I, I had a problem with. And there's the fact that, um, and it's less clear to me what black should do towards the lower left corner. So you can see they're both trying to put pressure on each other. It could be that black um, overplayed slightly here. So uh, for instance, at this point, it would have been a, um, a lot easier for me if I had chosen to play something like this and give them the corner to white. And uh, I, I would have found, found this kind of game a lot easier for black to, to continue with. So I would be thinking somewhere along the lines of this kind of, in which case black wouldn't have to worry about the center so much and wouldn't have to worry about that, that group that black has, um, in the, on the lower side either. It's probably going to be okay. So I think it was those two points where the game, um, if I were playing it, those would be the two points where I would be feeling a lot more un uncomfortable for black. So let's just see how they're finishing the game. Let's um, just go through the sequence here. So you can see here how Black was forced to live on a small scale in the corner. White managed to uh, finish the lower side. And after this, um, just so much of the game is focusing around whether or not White can make a center territory. And it ends with Black getting this group on the left. You can see Black is losing a lot of points um, towards the lower right corner. Black did get over 30 points in capturing this white group on the left. But white's getting something back. White's getting stuff back. So in, in the end, white got this um, something like 25 point capture on the right side, plus several points towards the corner. And white just has some territory in the, in the center. So it, I think at, at that point, it was starting to look good for white already. Um, but white did successfully attack black there, I think. So this is how the game is turning out towards the end of the game. Let's just jump forward there, didn't it? So let's just take another look. 
And it looks like then the end of the game is near. So after that, um, there's just some points on the upper side, and they're pretty much finished with, they have to fix the board, uh, boundaries of White's territory in the center, and that's going to be it. And after all, it does look like Black's going to win before Komi. I mean, after Komi. I mean, before Komi. Yes. Black's going to win before Komi. Uh, but, yeah. I think Komi is going to be too big anyway. Yes, Noah Dawson's, that's right, yes. Whatever happens, there's going to be a Japanese player in the final, because um, uh, if Yama loses today, uh, they will have to play the Korean player, so Shin Jin So will show up, and he'll play the winner of this game. And then, um, then a Japanese player after that, or, or, yeah, well, it depends, of course. Um, but they'll run out of uh, Chinese players. So, in the end, um, if it goes on to the final round, it will be um, either KJ or Shin Jin So against the final. Did White connect there? That seems to be the wrong place. It could be that White just lost a point. Hmm. Maybe there was a potential semi. -eye. Ah, yes. So I was sort of confused with this move. It's interesting. Mm hmm. Um, so what I'm saying here is that if White had answered on this side, I thought that would have been more territory for White. But maybe White, maybe Black has a kind of a potential semi here, which would which would force White to put stones inside. So that would be a a dangerous mistake. And the point White loses is because um, so so this was correct, but um, Black will be able to squeeze out another point either with this honey. Or sometimes with this on it sort of depends. 
but they're just finishing the game now. Um, there's just some small moves on the lower side, and the upper side is relatively big. So that they're, um, after Black finishes playing forcing moves, it'll be time to maybe uh, play a second line move on the upper side. Okay, so this was a fairly big move. But White gets to play the upper side now. Yes. So after that, it's going to be finished. There are just a few more moves. Yes. Um, actually, okay. Um, that was a final question by Pisti, nineteen eighty-two, asking about a monkey jump. Um, actually, White's pretty well connected there, even if White plays the monkey jump. So, for instance, even if we assume something like this, um, it's actually fairly difficult for White for Black to cut that because Black has a shortage of liberties also. So even if Black does something like this, there's no way for Black to cut that off. So Mike could have done the monkey jump. It just wasn't, um, maybe not so profitable. So um, it turns out Black resigned at this point. But um, 
yeah so if he if he answers something like this then white's probably going to answer um with this one um and white it's just over white white's going to win after Comey. so let's put the result up yeah and so white won by one by black's resignation i think maybe black was uh uh, about three points ahead on the board, a few points ahead on the board. So that's it for today. I'm going to finish um, after this. Um, just uh, don't forget to sign up to my channel if you haven't yet, um, because I, I do a lot of videos and stuff like that, and you'll get um, notifications when I, I'm going to do a live. And for this tournament, um, I'll be doing, this was game uh, round number 10. And there's going to be rounds every day, but I'm going to do round 12. So that's the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. And so it's going to be two days from now. Um, starting at the same time as this time. So it's 1400 um, in Japan time. So that's uh, UTC plus 9. And so I'll see, I hope I'll see you then. And um, these videos, I will leave them. You can watch them as videos at my um channel also so just to make sure you have my channel link um i'll copy it here once more and if anyone in um twitch chooses to visit my youtube channel here it is and so i'll say goodbye for now and see you next time and thanks to everyone for uh, staying here to the end um looking forward to doing it again. So goodbye.